חג שמח. חג שמח, שבת שלום. שבת שלום. חג שמח, חג שמח, לילה רע לילה רע לילה. חג שמח, חג שמח, לילה רע לילה רע לילה. שיר 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 חג שמח, לילה רע לילה רע לילה. שיר 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 חג שמח, לילה רע לילה רע לילה. Chag Sameach, Chag Sameach, Chag Sameach. Well, we welcome you to our service in our home. Uh, and this is the holiday of Shavuot that we're celebrating tonight, in addition to Shabbat. Shavuot is one of the three pilgrimage festivals, Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuot. Seven weeks and a day after Pesach, we celebrate this holiday. We welcome in the summer harvest, the spring harvest Pesach, the summer harvest Shavuot, the fall harvest Sukkot. The holiday began as an agricultural holiday thousands of years ago, and then took on a new meaning, the Jewish people receiving the Torah. And so we honor Torah study, we honor the idea of committing ourselves to ideas that we are far beyond rituals in our focus, far beyond ceremonies, even songs. As much as we love singing and rituals and ceremonies, we're about ideas, we're about words, we're about turning the words, as it says in the Midrash, the commentaries, turning the words of the Torah over and over, finding new meanings in them, understanding the white spaces between the black letters, turning them over and over and finding something always anew. And towards the end of the service, we'll be observing Yizkor four times a year. We remember those dear to us and we mourn for them. And we mourn also for the over 100,000 Americans and 350,000 people worldwide who have died from the coronavirus. So now we begin with the reading. The cantor is going to do a reading about Torah. I saw the ocean unfolding, but really it was Torah. Its pages going on forever, and the weight of its history like the finality of its black ink, darkly pulling me under. But there, in the sea of story, I found light in the spaces between the letters and in the blank parchment. I swear I could hear ancestors breathing with me, parting the waters through their exhale extending the scroll through the letters they took in. I saw the Torah unfolding, but really it was the ocean made by each of us, carrying the scroll through the waters of our breathing. We join together for the blessing over the Shabbat for Yom Tov candles. V'hadlik ner shel Shabbat for Yom Tov. We're celebrating both Shabbat and Yontiv, Shavuot, together. Now, someone asked last week about uh, what we have on our table here. Last week, I spoke about the picture by a former member of our congregation, the late Roberta Eisenberg, that decorates our living room, as do these Shabbat candles, brought to America from Ukraine, from Smolstetl to Melnik, by my grandmother over a century Ago. And we use them in Shabbat at the holidays, and we really like these candlesticks. We join together for the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech, Aolam, Asher kideshanu b'mitzvotad, V'tzivahanu, Le'ahat likner, Le'ahat likner, 
של שבת ושל יום טוב. We join together for the Shekhyanu, expressing gratitude for reaching this day. ברוך אתה, אדוני אלוהינו, מלך העולם, שהחיינו וקימנו והגיענו לזמן הזה. ברוך אתה, אדוני אלוהינו, מלך העולם, שהחיינו וקימנו והגיענו לזמן הזה. another reading about the importance of Torah in our lives. The readings and songs in tonight's service are devoted to Torah. And you know, when we put the Torah back in the ark on a Shabbat morning or a holiday, we say, We ask that we be returned to our ideal self, the one who we wish to be. As we return the Torah, we return to ourselves. And so here's the poem by Alana Joy Streit. Return us to ourselves, return us to each other. Return us to the earth and return us to our land. Return us to this moment Return us to our knowing. Return us to our rhythms. Return us to sleep in the middle of the night. Return us to our deepest desires, our shared loves, our clear visions. Return us to our bodies, to our breath, to breathing easily. Return us to knowing how beautiful we are. Return us to ourselves. Return us to each other. Return us to our good questions. Return us to love. Return us to our places of peacemaking. Return us to trusting each other and ourselves. Return us and behold that we are whole. Return us. Keep turning us for everything is within us. For Torah will keep coming out of us for sweetness. For sweetness is within us. For sweetness longs for us to return. That section of liturgy, of our tefillot, when we return the Torah, before Hashivenu, says, It's chayim hi l'machazikim ba, v'tomchecha mushar that the Torah is a tree of life, enriching everyone that grasps it. We join together.
As we get ready for the Shabbat, found in your prayer books, our Xerox prayer books that are downloadable from our homepage, you'll see on page four the Shema. Now these words that really proclaim one of the great gifts that we've given to Western civilization, seeing everything as a unity, divinity, humanity, one. All of it one, it's a universe. We all belong to each other. We're all responsible for each other. We have different ways of expressing divinity. But we know that down deep, our parallel paths point to the same divine reality, the ground of being, that spark within every human being, within each of us, that leads us towards being loving and caring people. So let's close our eyes before we join in chanting the Shema. Breathe in Shabbat. Breathe in Shavuot. And let's spend a few moments in silence asking ourselves what the most important thing for us about Torah is. Is it the visible Torah that we see, that we kiss as it is walk down the aisle at a Shabbat service? Is it the ideas within the Torah that command us to be caring and loving, to live by the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule, and everything that speaks about ethical and caring and loving living in the Torah? Is it the centuries of the Torah being passed down from generation to generation? Is, the Torah, is it that the Torah reminds us of the joy, the pleasure, the honor of being a Jew? Breathe in Shabbat. Breathe in Shavuot. And let's spend a few minutes in meditation before the Shema. Thank you. 
וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך, ובישריך. The book of Ruth is one of the two texts read on Shavuot, the other being the Ten Commandments, which uh, the cantor will chant in a few minutes. Uh, the book of Ruth is read as a counterbalance to the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments uh, say to us, you're special, you were at Sinai, but the rabbis were bothered by chosenness. This isn't just a modern idea of being bothered by chosenness. The rabbis were bothered by it thousands of years ago. And they said, lest our people become narcissistic, become arrogant and chauvinistic, we need a corrective. So the corrective to the idea of being at Sinai, just our people, the first Midrash was, it wasn't just the Jewish people. It was everybody who would be there embryonically, people that would be born in the future to the Jewish people, people who would become Jews by choice, people who would be drawn to the idea of Judaism. They were all there at Sinai. It was a way of saying, relax and be more inclusive. Don't be so particularistic only. Open all the doors and windows and invite people in to taste the beauty of Judaism. But then they went further. They added the book of Ruth to the reading of Shavuot because Ruth is the story of the first Jew by choice, the first convert to Judaism who says, your people, to Naomi, her mother-in-law, who's widowed, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. So even though Naomi was widowed, even though Ruth was widowed, even though Ruth was urged by Naomi to leave and find with your people, to find a husband, to find a future, to have children, she felt so close to Naomi, she refused to leave. And she asked for a different future. And she is so honored by our tradition. We welcome everyone in. It's not like it used to be. Our synagogue, the Reconstructionist movement, liberal Judaism as a whole says, come and learn, come and be part of the Jewish experience. That is one of the great messages of Shavuot. The doors and the windows are open. You're invited to come in. If you convert, mazel tov. If you don't convert and you want to be what we call in, in the Torah, gerim v'toshvim, people who are interested in Judaism but not ready to convert, we have a place for you forever. Be part of our people. Be part of our tradition. Be part of the Jewish experience. Here are some words echoing that message. Between those who have much and those who have little, let us sprinkle kindness like grain seeds and let our kindness burst forth like a bountiful harvest growing, life-giving, and available to every single one who seeks nourishment from the field. And if we should find ourselves standing across from a stranger, or if we should happen to be a stranger in the company of one who is not, may we rise to meet the other with love in our hearts and the wholesomeness of good deeds. And may our kindness sustain ourselves and each other through this and every season of life. That prayer was written by the poet Devin Spire. We continue with this song by a group called Revival, a group that sings of biblical tradition and here sings the story of Ruth. Hi, I'm Kristen Plyler-Moore, the writer and producer of Revival, 
a spiritual folk rock music show with themes of love and justice. Hi, I am Leah Kalish. I'm Julia Ostrov, and we sing in revival. Along with musicians Sam Gilligley and Eugene Romashov, we're so glad to share one song from the show with you in honor of Shavuot. On this holiday, it's customary to read from the Book of Ruth, and this song explores the heart of that story, the bond between Ruth and Naomi. Ki el asher telchi elech uva asher talin yolin amech ami velohai velohai ba asher tamut yamut on a dusty open road. To her homeland in the west Naomi could not hold All the tears that she had left As she stood before her journey She said goodbye to Ruth Go on to your family May the Lord always bless you But Ruth would never leave her Naomi was her home said as she held her, you're the family I know. Wherever you go, I will go there too. Where you live, I'll live. Your people will be mine. Your God will be my God. And where you rest, I'll lie. Through the barren land, Beneath the desert flame The strength found in each other Was a providential rain And it brought them to the Jordan Where they waded through the tides Over hills that followed To a promised land they climbed Wherever you go That was we, beautiful. Yeah, it really was. Really? We want to thank the group Revival, uh, who offered their uh, video uh, through a Reconstructionist rabbinical colleague of mine uh, to the Reconstructionist movement and possibly beyond as well, um, so that it, so they would give a gift to us. Uh, for Shavuot, yeah. and so we appreciate it very much. Thank you. The canon will continue with the reading. Before there was Torah, there was thunder, lightning, the sound of a horn beating, a mountain and smoke billowing, people trembling. The word arose from sight and sound. To receive Torah was a moment but what of the moment prior in which our senses and primal feelings called out, wanting to stay at a distance, 
but remaining firmly in place, as if to say, I'm scared and I'm ready. Reveal Torah, and with your blessing, reveal me. In a moment, the cantor will uh, chant the Ten Commandments, the Torah, the Torah reading for Shavuot, symbolic of the giving of the Torah on Shavuot. So I want to ask you a question. Which is your favorite of the Ten Commandments? Uh, how do you rate them? Which commandment would you put first? Would you change the order? Would you delete some? Would you add others? Whenever I ask this in an adult education class or in a confirmation class, there's always a wonderful discussion. Now, we're not going to be able to have that wonderful discussion now, but you'll be able to have that discussion at home. So spend Shabbat, a little time on Shabbat, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, perhaps sitting around the table and ask yourself those questions and ask those around the table those questions or pick up the phone and call someone and ask those questions. First commandment is announcing, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. The second is against idolatry. The third is not about not swearing falsely by God's name. Observing the, the Sabbath, Shabbat is the next. Honoring your father and mother, not murdering, not committing adultery, not stealing, not bearing false witness, and finally not coveting, not being obsessive in your desire. Think about the commandments, because the reading of the commandments is the ritual. The thinking about the commandments is what makes us walking in the footsteps of our ancestors, interpreting the Torah. We're not the people of the book. We're much more the people of the interpretation of the book. If you have a talit, please join us. If not, it's perfectly okay the way you are. We're going to join together for the blessings over the Torah. Barechu et Adonai Hamvorach, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach leolam vaher, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kerbanu lavodato, Venatalanu et torato, Baruch Ata Adonai noten ha Torah. Baeda beher Elohim et kol hadvarim aile leimor, Anochi Adonai Elohecha, Asher Otseitiha, Meretz Mitzrayim Ibeit Abadim, Lo Iye Lecha, Elohim Acherim Al Panai, Lo Tase Lecha Fesel Bechol Temuna, Asher Bashamayim Imal, Vasher Baaretz Mitachat, ואשר במים מתחת לארץ, לא תשתחווה להם ולא תעבדם, כי אנוכי, אדוני אלוהיך, אל קנה פוקר. עוון אבות על בנים, על שילי שים ועל ריבים לשונאי, ועושה חסד לאלפים, לאוהבי ולשומרי מצוותי, לא תישא את שם אדוני אלוהיך לשווא. כי לא ינקה שישת ימים תעבור, ועשית כל מלאכתך. ביום השביעי, שבת לאדוני אלוהיך, לא תעשה כל מלאכה, אתה ובנך ובתך, עבדך ואמתך ובהמתך, וגרך אשר בשעריך. כי ששת ימים 
אז אדוני את השמיים ואת הארץ את הים ואת כל אשר פעם וינח ביום השביעי על כן ברך אדוני את יום השבת ויקדשהו כבד את אביך ואת אמך למען יאריכון ימיך על האדמה אשר אדוני אלוהיך נותן לך לא תרצח, לא תנח, לא תגנוב, לא תענה ברעך תשקר, לא תחמוד בית רעך, לא תחמוד אשת רעך, ועבדו במתו ושורו בחמורו וכל אשר לרעך. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. We join together singing Yisrael ואורייתא חד הוא The Jewish people and the Torah are one. Israel, Israel, and the Israel, Israel, and the young canters, those young canters who were teenagers with us many years ago, now we're in their 20s, will lead us in Mishaberach, a prayer, a blessing for healing. Think of those who are ill, think of their names, and in our hearts, wish them Refuah Shlema. Thank you to the millennial young cantors. You're always amazing and we love you. Thank you. We join together for Kiddush, Motzi and Motziah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Bore peri agafen lechaim And we join together for the traditional Motzi and the modern egalitarian Motziah. 
ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, המוציא לחם מן הארץ, נברך את עין החיים, המוציאה לחם מן הארץ. In a moment we're going to conclude the service with Yizkor, four times a year we remember those who have passed away at Pesach, Shavuot, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. And then immediately after Mourner's Kaddish that concludes Yizkor, please stay tuned for my interview with the president of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College and the president of our umbrella organization of our congregations, Reconstructing Judaism. And both of those hats are worn by Rabbi Deborah Waxman. It's an interesting interview focusing on rational and irrational religion, the development of Reconstructionism, and the future of Reconstructionism. We rise for the Yizkor service Uh, it was available, it is available on our homepage to download it or to watch it on a separate device. Page 641, please rise. We read together. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. For the next few moments in silence, from page 638, we remember those from our families and among our friends whom we've lost, we can use the traditional words in 638 or just our own prayerful words inside of our hearts. The cantor continues on the next page with the Amalei Rachamim. El Amalei Rachamim, Shochen Evam Romim, Hamesem Menucha Nechona, Tachat Kanfei Hashchina, Bemalot Kedoshim Uteori, כזוהר הרקיע מזהירים. לנשמות יקירינו קדושינו שלחו לעולמם. אנא בעל הרחמים הסתירן בצל כנפיך לעולמים. וצרור בצרור החיים את נשמתם. אדוני הוא נחלתם וינוחו ושלום על משכבם. The first El Malei Rachamim was for our personal losses. This next is for the martyrs and victims of our people, those who were victims of the Shoah, those 
who fought bravely for the existence of the State of Israel. We remember them with this second El Malei Rachamim. El Malei Rachamim shochene b'amromim Ametze menucha nechona Tachat kanfe ashkina Bemalot kedoshim uteorim Kezoar haraki If you uh, were not able to download Yizkor, you can still join on page 11 for the final prayer, page 11 of our Xerox Sidurim for Mourners Kaddish. Think of those for whom you mourn, people who have passed away recently or a long time ago. Perhaps this is someone's yard site, the anniversary of a death, and you're remembering them. For all those whom we remember, zichronam livracha, their memories are a blessing to us all. We join together. Yitkadal v'yitkadash mei rabah, v'yalmad ivrach yirutei v'yamliet malchutei, v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei d'chobet Yisrael, v'agalav yisman kariv v'imru amein, yehesh mei rabah mivarach v'yalamu l'mei almaya, Yit barach, yit tabach, yit paar, yit romam, yit nase. Yit adar, yit alev, yit alal, shmeri kudsha, riyahu. Leilam in kol birchata, vishirata, tushbechata, vinechemata, dami rambi alma, vimru amen. Yehe shalama rabba min shalaya, vichayim alenu vial ko yisrael, vimru amen. O se shalom vimru amen. Hu yase shalom, aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael, v'yal kol Yoshvei Tevel, v'imru amen. We join together singing words of peace on us, on our people, and all humanity. Ose shalom.
Stay tuned for Re Rabbi Deborah Waxman on Reconstructionism, my interview with her. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Chag, Sameach. Chag Sameach. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Chag, Chag Sameach. Sameach. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Our guest tonight is Rabbi Deborah Waxman. Dr. Waxman is the president of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College and also of our umbrella group, Reconstructing Judaism. Deborah, it's a pleasure to have you tonight at Shabbat Services. I'm so happy to be with you and with all the members of University Synagogue. Well, it's, it's you're just a wonderful guest. You're very erudite and articulate, and you know you have become you're really a product of the Reconstructionist movement in a way that, it, with no disrespect meant to other previous past presidents, you're among the few who have entered the RRC, graduated from the RRC, then worked at the RRC, and, and you really sort of know every nook and cranny of the rabbinical school and the, and the movement. It was never um, quite my plan, but this has <laughs> been my entire adult home. Yeah, well, it, it, it's great. So I want to start with, what do you think the three best and most relevant ideas about Reconstructionism are? What a great question. And I'm so happy to be in conversation with you, especially Arnie, about this. Um, I think that I want to raise up, um, either, you can either count them as three or maybe um, two different um, elements of, 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 of one. I want to talk about what, where I think that what was the founding of Reconstructionism with, was, was, was as on a commitment to diversity. That the, the one of the reasons that Kaplan articulated a definition of Judaism as the evolving religious civilization of the Jewish people was to make the case that, that the civilization itself was diverse, both across space and time. And so too, the people who make up the civilization, who create it, and who live in it and who perpetuate it, we too are diverse. And so that commitment to that diversity, that recognition that there are many different interesting and legitimate ways to be Jewish, really is at the heart of a reconstructionist approach. It's vitalizing, I think, in a lot of ways, and it's demanding, it's challenging. It means that we can't ever rest on our laurels and presume that the way we are doing it is the only way or the best way, and that we have to go and seek and learn from other people and, and, and to be with them and to meet them on their Jewish journey and to bring them along. Well, so let me ask you, some, what are some of those laurels you mentioned? In other words, what are the touchstones of the movement in the past that have made a difference in American and world Jewish life? Well, so Reconstructionism was, um, there's, there's always been this incredible brace, embrace of democracy at the heart of a Reconstructionist approach. And that meant alongside of that, that there was from the very beginning, a commitment to egalitarianism. Mordecai Kaplan was starting his first synagogue Oh, not his first. He's the first Reconstructionist synagogue in 1922, right after women were granted the vote. And so the SAJ, then called uh, Society for the Advancement of Judaism, now called Judaism that stands for all, it was founded as an egalitarian congregation where women had a vote. The, 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 one of the very first things that they did was uh, his eldest daughter was, was 12 and a half years old. And three weeks after the synagogue opened its doors, Judith Kaplan, Kaplan then, later Eisenstein, was called to the, uh, not to the Torah, she was, he took the Aliyah, but she came up and had what was the first bat mitzvah in, in, in the United States. So that kind of commitment to egalitarianism, um, counting women in the minion in the early 50s has been kind of hardwired in from the very beginning. RRC, the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College, where you and I both graduated, was established as a, an egalitarian institution in 1968. I think that same kind of um, awareness and recognition led to um, a real understanding that as American Jews were starting to marry folks who were not Jewish, that that decision was not co-equal with, with a decision to exit the Jewish community. So since the late 60s, we've been on the record as, uh, as a recognizing patrilineal descent, that a child of one Jewish parent 
um, who was raised in a Jewish household was could be considered Jewish. And more to the point also, making space for embracing those non-Jewish partners who were interested in throwing their lot in with the Jewish people in building up our communities and, and, and our, our uh, and our and our synagogues. And we learned very early on that if you welcome in people and allow them to contribute what they have to contribute, we're going to be transformed in ways we can't necessarily anticipate. And it's going to be wonderful and interesting. And, and we, uh, we will all find a different kind of home. So let me ask you about this. I'm sorry. Well, let me ask you about this idea of inclusion, right? It began as egalitarianism. And today it's even more defining of what the Reconstructionist movement is in terms of inclusion, as you said, of spouses, of Jews, people who convert, people who don't convert, people who are part of Jewish families. There was actually an article by a couple of our graduates, if I remember correctly, came out a year or two ago that said, if you marry one of us, you are one of us. Um, you know, even sort of taking it further that just the act of, almost biblically, right? The act of marrying into the Jewish people was enough to be considered. And I think de facto, most Reconstructionist synagogues, although they still have a, a portal for conversion, they treat non-Jews married to Jews or non-Jews in search, not married to anybody. People who are curious, people who are seekers, they treat them with the same an equal dignity that they treat born Jews. They're part of the synagogue. They're part of the Jewish family, even if not officially Jewish themselves. Right. And what it also means that if and when that person chooses to become Jewish, it's his or her own decision. There's no coercion. There, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's freely chosen. And in my observation, joyfully chosen as opposed to any kind of coloring of coercion or other people's expectations. Um, so that's really, that's, I think that's very beautiful. Um, and I would so I'd carry it over also to LGBTQ folks. Right. Uh, certainly I benefited from, from that. And now I think one of the projects of the Reconstructionist Movement is really paying attention to the fact that there are, there are the, the numbers are contested this last week. There's been a big article about this. I, I read those articles, yeah. Mm, very interesting. A growing number of Jews of color in our Jewish communities often um, either not seen or not embraced, um, discriminated against, actually terrible, painful stories we, you hear again and again. Some are, some are born Jewish, some are Jews by choice, some, ha some have, were adopted into multiracial families. And so we're working really hard to, to, to figure out how, how, to, how to dismantle the, the ways that we have unconsciously internalized structures of racism, ways that we can center the experience of Jews of color. And we know this is gonna change us. And we know, from, as we've learned from past experience, that change is, is going to be vitalizing. I mean, it's interesting that we're talking um, on, the, on the week that Shavuot falls, where the corrective to the potential narcissist, the, the narcissism, uh, where the rabbi said to the, to the Jews, don't think you're so special because you got the Ten Commandments, because you got the Torah, which is, of course, the reading of the day. But we balance it off with a recognition of the Book of Ruth that people who come from the outside can definitely enrich us and be incredibly loyal and, and can say, your people shall be my people. So um, inclusion is a very good topic. For now I'm going to switch to another topic, which well, I was going to say religious yeah, humanism, but you introduced that is my topic. Go for it. Go so, for it. So I was going to ask you in in the days of the founding of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College, many students were attracted, and then they became rabbis, attracted especially to the movement because of its religious naturalism and its religious humanism. It was a way of saying God is not a person, a personality, a supreme being. God is a force or power inside people that lead them towards being loving and caring people. Um, What's the place of religious humanism, religious naturalism in today's Reconstructionism? Well, I want to uh, project a little bit ahead to what I said what it was either my third or another part of this, and that's about a rejection of chosenness, because I think that that's a really important part, part of it. 
I, what I would say is that um, I would quote Mordecai Kaplan, who would say, it's not important. The most important thing is that you have a God idea, not what that God idea is. So there's no litmus test to be a part of either a Reconstructionist congregation or a um, uh, or the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College. And we weight very, very heavily toward e religious naturalism, toward process theology, toward, um, I would say also neo-Hasidism, which uh, uh, understands, talks much more about mystery, where, the, where Kaplan and the circle around him, and I think the founding generation at RRC, it, it, at that moment in time, there was a binary between rationalism and irrationalism. And Kaplan and his circle really spent a lot of time railing against the idea of supernatural. Sometimes they would talk, say irrationalism or supernaturalism, the idea that God would intervene in history, that, 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 that the story of Sinai was literal as opposed to this powerfully transformative experience that our ancestors had and recorded, but, but, it's, but it's not necessarily, it's true with a small T rather than with a capital T. And I think that one of the, the uh, gleanings of postmodernity is to move beyond just that binary of rationalism and irrationalism and, and, and introduce that third category of non-rationalism. Yeah, except I would say, I would say even among the, you know, the, the early students of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College, including me, that, um, no, no, we had those three categories. Sure, we, sure. we felt that, you know, that religious services and ritual are part of the theater, the dance, right. the choreography of Jewish worship. No, we appreciated the non-rational. Um, we certainly were against the irrational. Right. We certainly favored the rational, but we saw the aesthetic and the so, so you know the sociological and psychological importance of the non-rational, but That's I do think That's beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. I do think what is, what uh, worries some of us who uh, became Reconstructionists in the early days is that even if the people who are pursuing the mystery inherent in neo hasidism do they get lost in that pursuit? That's the first one. And the second one is, do the people around them who join the drumming circle, for instance, or the, the you know, the davening circle, do those people get it? You know, we were very clear, um, you know, Kaplan was pretty clear, I would say. He kind of sometimes hedged about what he meant by religious naturalism. You can cherry pick different places in his, his books. But... I think we were pretty clear that this was the form of Judaism that attracted us because we wanted to embrace Judaism fully, head and heart, and traditional theology we could not embrace with our heads. So that's why it was so important to us. And I understand that movements evolve and change over time. But for us, that was probably the most precious dimension of Reconstructionism. And there is some fear on, on our part, um, that, uh, that that could be diminished in the future. And I do think in the American Jewish marketplace of ideas, that is a very attractive aspect of Reconstructionism, a movement that is very clear and doesn't obfuscate about theology. I think that I, I, I really agree with, with, with pretty much everything you're saying. The challenge that uh, we face is my experience a lot of people are not so interested in talking about theology. So that, there's that, that, you know, when people are interested in talking about theology, boy, is it a great conversation. And for many people, it's, it's revelatory. But finding those people or, and having those conversations can be challenging. And I will say in many, many Reconstructionist congregations, people join because they love the, the feel or the people of the congregation not because they are aware of the ideology. And it's partly, it's my job. And I think you you are actually much more forthright about it than many other rabbis at, at really making explicit what is Reconstructionist about what you're doing. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, I think, so one part of it is theology. The other part of it is, and, and you know it, especially like how much do you, 
how much how much are we teaching and when are we teaching versus pastoring versus um, creating you you talked about ritual as performance and how much you want to um, break into that performance to explain I'm terrible at jokes but I think I can tell this one that they the that um, Ira Eisenstein the founding president of RRC um, would joke who, who, who used to love to lead study sessions um, and, and that, 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 that reconstructionist idea of heaven was a study group on ideas of heaven. <laughs> like, you know, like that. So, so like that, that balance between constantly talking about it versus actually the, the, the kind of the part of religious life that is um, let, where, it's not, where the rationalism doesn't overtake the heart. So that's, that's another part of the challenge. That's where I think the rejection of chosenness comes in because that chauvinism and fi finding a way, putting forward a way of being deep, deeply and fervently particularistic without being chauvinist is so essential. Um, and, you know, a kind of particularism that also opens up toward universalism that feels essential for this moment in time. And I think that reconstructionism and our rejection of chosenness, which is entirely tied up to ethical concerns and the embrace of religious humanism, um, opens that conversation, furthers that conversation. So I will say to you that in my public representation right now in the midst of the pandemic, I'm talking a lot about predicate theology, about the idea that it's not so much God as subject, God as the person, but the attributes that, that, that are associated with God, the justice, and, you know, God is just or God is healer, that in fact, when we see justice, when we see healing, that's when we know of the presence of the divine. And furthermore, we can invoke that, we can create, we can co-create with with, with, with God to bring that kind of godliness forward. That's like my major talk right now as a, both a, a comfort for people and a strategy in the midst of the pandemic. And when I'm in multi-faith circles, I am often talking about a, a rejection of chosenness. Um, as a, so, so, so I draw very, very heavily on, the, on classical reconstructionist commitments. So I want to thank you for being with us. This has been a, a a, a really fun, enjoyable, and, and intellectually stimulating um, uh, interview. So thank you for being with us for this Shabbat. It's so wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. And I want to say again, Shabbat Shalom, be safe. And I, I so look forward to when we can do this in person. That's great. It's wonderful. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.